First of all, we want to distinguish between gender equity and gender equality. Of course, gender refers to being or to the state of being either male or female, and it's usually in relation to social and cultural relations based on what we consider to be appropriate for men and women. So essentially, the concept of gender is averagely rooted in psychological, cultural, and behavioral aspects of either being a male or female. While equity refers to fairness, it means justice, good faith, and good conscience. So it focuses essentially on what is fair and what we consider to be just above technicalities and strictness. So it means that when we are looking at gender equity, we are looking at being fair to both men and women. And in a sense, this is averagely different from gender equality. I know for a long time, the society and everybody has been shouting, gender equality, gender equality, gender equality. And I would explain the reason why we are trying to distinguish between these two. Because equality focuses on equal opportunities and treatment for both men and women. Equality presupposes or gives us the assumption that men and women are equal in terms of capacity, opportunities, historically, social constructs, and so on. So it means that men and women should be given exactly the same treatment and opportunities. But we know that historically, socially, and in terms of opportunities that both men and women have been given, that it has not necessarily been equal. On the other hand, equity takes into consideration various factors, including the limiting factors that may have affected one group. It considers, you know, um, that men and women did not start or have not started from the same starting position, including historically, especially because women have generally not had a voice or been given opportunities, or they have even been actively in that compared to their male counterparts. So it recognizes these needs and experiences of each of the gender and seeks that these factors should be taken into more uh, consideration so that I can be a more equitable playing ground under which both gender can thrive. To subject a disadvantaged group, in this case, we are talking of women who for a long time have not been allowed you know, to be at the table, to subject them to the same rules, which is what equality you know, would want us to do, actually is something that will continue to perpetuate disparity. There is a picture, like we can see on the slide, we have the picture of what equality would look like, that every single person having one soul. But by the time you have this, somebody like the toddler who has just a stool is still hindered by defense from viewing the football field or whatever is happening behind that wall. That is equality. We are giving everybody equal treatment. But on the other hand, we have equity now. In equity, the man who is already tall enough gives up his own stool, so to say. For the toddler, we, though has a stool, could not see. And now the toddler has to and can see what is happening. And then you have the man. So every single person now has the, you know, fair opportunity to be able to view what is happening behind the fence. And that is why we think that we need to begin to shift the narrative from just a matter of equality, equality. We need to take the fact that some people have been hindered. Some people have social and various factors that has hindered them from being able to view, in this case, what is behind the fence and be equitable, taking these factors into consideration. All right, so I want to talk next about something else in the topic of what we to talk about, which is diversity. Of course, diversity refers to having different group of people you know, in a specified place or sphere. So you were looking at people with different opinions, different gender, different political views, religious, cultural, financial, existing in our organization. And we have to deal with this set of people, you know, at all times. And we must learn to deal with diversity in our organizations. We have to learn to deal with diversity. And so it is the same thing we need to learn to deal with or include both gender in our organizational governance. So the next thing I want to ask us this morning is what does success mean to your organization? 
Success, of course, is a positive outcome of an undertaking or endeavor. It is the accomplishment of an aim, a purpose, an objective, or vision. Of course, there are various parameters that we can use to measure success, such as increased revenue, increased coverage, increased capacity. But exactly what success will mean to each organization depends on the goals, the visions, and the values the organization has set. So it is when you achieve those goals or visions, you will say, yes, we as an organization, we have been successful. So the important question for us this morning is, is gender equity part of the goals and values and vision that you have set for your organization? Because until we inculcate this as part of the value system and the vision or goals of our organization, we cannot say we have been successful at it because there will be no basis for measuring our success or determining whether our organizations are really, really, you know, inclusive in terms of gender equity. So why, why should we bother about gender equity as an organization or as administrators? The first thing is that it helps to leverage on vast qualified population of women. In terms of statistics, I was arguing with somebody some days ago who said, oh, women are more than men. And I said, no, have you checked the statistics? In terms of statistics, you know, as at 2021, thereabouts, they have averagely equal in, in the world, actually. They have, even in Nigeria, I checked, they have averagely equal number with the men having a slight, you know, a slightly higher percentage. Averagely, the women are about 49%. Yes, please, you can Google it. It's surprising. <laughs> because then I was arguing, the person was saying, ah, you man should marry two wives because women are plentier than men. And I said, no, it's not true. You know, the men have about 51% of the world population and women 49%. And I checked also the statistics of Nigeria. We generally just assume that women are more, not necessarily so. But what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to make is that the population of men and women are averagely half of the world population. So by the time you exclude women who have many times comparable educational attainments as the main, you know, comparable skills and capacities as the main, by the time they are excluded from governance or administration or even in the workplace generally, we are actually shutting out a large potential workforce, a large chunk of our human capital that we could have leveraged upon for the success of our organizations. Generally, women are known to bring stability, balance, reason, compassion, and care to the table which are qualities we need in our businesses and organization. Another reason is because it enhances better decision-making. By the time we consider diverse opinions, perspectives, experiences in a gender diverse team, it enables us to consider broader possibilities and come up with more innovative and effective resolutions or decisions. It creates or encourages collaboration, trust, and psychological safety, which are very important for creating good conditions for better decision making. Third advantage I have here is that it increases financial performance. By the time we have a gender inclusive team, studies have shown that diverse executive boards, you know, that have both gender represented, um, results in better skill sets, experiences, and perspective. I have the data here of a study by McKinsey and company that found that a companies in the top quartile for gender diversity had 15 more percent likely to perform their industry peers. And boards that had women, you know, in their management team, they generally had increase generally in the return on equity and on earnings per share. So uh, compared to their colleagues that did not have, you know, female members on their boards. Of course, it also increases or promotes innovation. When you have a diverse team that can participate in the governance and administration of organization, it can lead to generation of groundbreaking ideas. And there is a strong relationship between equity and um, diversity on the one hand and innovation and performance on the other hand, because diversity, inclusiveness, and gender equity are closely linked to innovation and performance because it broadens the talent pool, discourages stereotypes, reduces overconfidence, and allows us to take advantage of complementariness between the different perspectives and skills. 
Another reason why we need to take gender equity seriously is because it is increasingly being demanded by the society. Your customers, your clients, those you deal with generally, investors, financiers, collaborators, governments, everyone is trying to you know, move towards gender equity as a fundamental principle of sustainability and growth. Everyone is demanding organizations to be fair, to be gender sensitive and give fair playing ground to both men and women. Hence, you have the fact that gender equity is also a part of social justice. Considering the social constructs and the way stereotypes that both gender, you know, have gone through over the years, there is a demand now to try to correct the errors of the past and ensure social justice. So an organization that prioritizes gender equity would be dismantling social barriers that have been hampered or disadvantaged women over the years and will be a champion of gender diversity and equity. I will give the academia as an example. Sometimes when people want to give you grants, especially foreign organizations, they would want to know what is the percentage you know, of the women in your staff or your administration what are you doing in terms of the sustainable development goals? What have you done to promote gender equity? How many percent? So they want statistics. So generally any organization that includes, you know, tries to balance this gender ratio or equation would have better chances generally.